Hi again. So we continue talking about chapter three. We were discussing communication traits and personality traits, and we discussed communication traits such as apprehension, um, argumentativeness, um, verbal aggression, communication aggression. And now we switch to personality traits. The first one is Machiavellianism. Machiavellianism it is influencing people to exert power over others. <clears throat> it is um, um, named after the Italian uh, thinker Machiavelli. Um, so uh, it is to, to gain power over others, to dominate over conversations. But this is more of a personality trait dealing with a person's psychology. And the abbreviated form of referring to this is, is, is MAC. So there are pe people with high levels of this trait or low levels. We say high MAC, uh, medium MAC or low MAC. That's the ability and willingness and the desire to influence other people and to take over um, the situation, communication. Self-monitoring people this these are personality traits but we're looking at them from communicative uh, from a communication perspective self monitoring is someone who pays attention to the social requirements and tries to be appropriate effective um, adapt uh, verbal and nonverbal behavior in order to um, to be well received by the, by the group that's self monitoring so self aware self discipline and finally, self-esteem, the third one, the person's overall self-worth. People with low self-esteem uh, do not praise themselves, don't feel good about themselves, whereas people with high self-esteem, they tend to be better communicators in general because they would accept a lot more without feeling compromised. So in a small group, how does this all play out? The textbook has all of the scenarios written out in, in great detail, but I will give you very brief highlights and I trust that you can read the rest from the textbook. So, in a small group, uh, an apprehensive group member would interact less and avoid expressing disagreement. So that person would stay away from argument, but would also stay away from leading or expressing a lot of opinion. Higher apprehensive members participate in fewer meetings and report less cohesiveness. So it's not just lower participation, but even lower attendance. Uh, because they don't like being with a group. The second, um, it, there is a connection between communication style and apprehensiveness. Highly apprehensive individuals are less relaxed and dominant, less dominant, than people with lower apprehension. Um, third, the chapter elaborates on highly argumentative group members who are more likely to be seen as more influential in a group, to have more power, because if they argue, it seems like they always um, have firm opinions that they have confidence. So when you argue, you show confidence and then you may gain influence. Also, highly argumentative group members rate themselves higher on several personality traits than less argumentative ones. So they would be more open, more dramatic more assertive. Um, so that was the fourth observation regarding the personality traits expressed in a small group setting. A group member's level of Machiavellianism influences group interaction. Um, it may benefit if the, uh, if the person's interests are the same as the group's interests. But high max tend to put their self-interest above the groups and so they might actually come off as selfish um, and lead the group in a different direction that fits their interests. And remember that we said that ethics forbid us, ethical considerations forbid us from doing so. Um, our goals should always be aligned with the group goals. We should not have personal agendas, but high um, MAC individuals usually, you know, take, um, take a chance on expressing their self-interest. 
High self monitoring individuals. This is number six ob observation. High self monitors are more active, talkative, likely to emerge as leaders than low self monitors. People who are very well aware of their own place in a group, um, they adjust better, it seems like. And finally, the seventh observation a group member with low self esteem is more susceptible to group member influence. Of course, if you have low self-esteem, you don't trust yourself. <clears throat> and you know, again, unfortunately, I may have to report something that has to do with a person's background. Um, <clears throat> if English is not your first language, you may not feel confident to express your views. If you are also a woman in a group of high power individuals, um, I, I am speaking of an example of a, of a female finance economist expert sitting in a group of elderly you know caucasian men who hold a lot of power expertise experience expressing her opinion <clears throat> before she does so she has to think three times and by the time she's sure that she has something valid to say um the moment has passed and see she ends up not saying that Later on, the mentor of this individual would turn around and say, you know, next time if you notice something, say, say something, because your comments could have been useful at the time <clears throat> if they were made um, in a timely fashion. So it's not always good to keep quiet. Uh, even if you may turn out to be wrong, just try to put it in a gentle way to say, you know, I have this idea i have this thought and i'm not absolutely sure if it's valid but if you could just listen to me please you know let's just talk about this and you tell me what you think um generally opening up with a statement such as what do you think about this would this be completely wrong or would there be value to this <clears throat> that leaves you a little room um for a mistake for an error but in general people with high self-esteem they don't need that because they will they will have the confidence so um back to group dynamics as we said number seven um low self-esteem leads to being influenced and dominated upon and so a person with low self-esteem is rarely a leader the final comment before we um, wrap this up is that groups are often as good as the members um, that that comprise those groups and um, <clears throat> you know because people are all very different you can have an endless infinite number of types of groups you can have five to seven people who are all apprehensive you can have five to seven people who all have leadership um, traits so um, leadership is not a trait it's it's more of a behavior, but a role. <clears throat> but you can have very many different scenarios, almost endless, depending on the number of the group members. Um, and so we're here to study the ways they communicate in a small group setting. So this was a very brief summary of what's in chapter three, <clears throat> with the idea that some of you may not have the textbook, so I'm staying close to the text. I'm not going too far for examples. Um, the textbook, I should say, begins, um, the chapter starts with a very long and nice example of a <clears throat> man coming home to, to his wife um, without the promised dinner because he was late, um, he was delayed by a meeting, and he retells um, the dynamics of that meeting, you know, with a little bit of irritation. And there is a uh, the possibility of noticing how different people may behave differently in different contexts, circumstances. Say the man um, described in this in this example, he may behave one way with his wife, although it's an interpersonal, it's not small group, but let's say there was a family, four people, five people in a family. He might be a different kind of person with his family members than he is with his uh, colleagues, co-workers. And I've known a lot of people who behave differently in a one-on-one -on -one setting uh, than they do in a group setting. Um, you know, there is always nonverbal 
um, expression. People would blush, people would roll eyes, people would uh, smirk, they would whisper, they would write notes or doodle. Um, and there would be people who speak up and disagree and argue. Um, so there is no way of telling what kind of person you would be in a group setting. It also depends on the group dynamics, how you feel in that group and who leads that group, how comfortable you are with the group. Okay, so wrapping up the chapter, putting it aside, tomorrow will be um, a quiz on this chapter. But I also wanted to remind you all that you need to look at the group assignment and give me your go ahead that you accept the topic for the assignment. Students usually like to be um, given a, a very specific task. And this is a specific task that actually matters to all of us, except for those who are graduating. But you can put yourself in that situation and have a have an opinion have a perspective on on the scenario um, the question is what's next semester going to look like for this particular class so um, read the assignment get back to me and we will talk some more next time thank you